What's going on guys? We're gonna be talking about the ATM business in today's video. My name is Austin Zayback. I appreciate you for tuning in. Typically on my channel, we're talking about how to make money, save money, invest your money, the stock market, real estate, and obviously, ATMs. So if you've ever wanted to get into the ATM business, I'm gonna be going over the most frequently asked questions in today's video. So I get asked questions all the time about the ATM business on my YouTube channel, on my TikTok, on my Instagram, and I figured I'd just make a video where I just literally covered every single question that anybody's ever asked me about the ATM business. So if you've ever wanted to make passive income with the ATM business, you've ever considered getting into the ATM business, or you've even just like had a dream about it at night, okay, then this video is definitely for you. So make sure you stay to the end of the video. And if you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you take just a quick moment and just smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. So let's just start real simple, real basic, and that is how do I make money with the ATM business? Now how you make money with the ATM business is really simple. You make money every time somebody uses your ATM machine through what they call a surcharge fee. Now the surcharge fee is 100% negotiable and the person that owns the ATM is responsible for deciding, assuming that the owner of the location is okay with it, but in the United States as of 2020, the average surcharge fee is $4.64, down about $0.08 cents from $4.72 in 2019. So just to keep it really simple, every time somebody uses your machine, you would in theory make $4.64. Now you're probably like Austin, well, does the owner of the location make any money? Or if I have somebody loading my machine, do they make any money? Again, for FAQ, question number one, we're gonna keep it really simple. We're gonna assume that you don't have a loader and that the owner of the location doesn't make anything. In theory, you would make the entire amount. So if somebody went to your ATM machine and pulled out $20, they would get charged by their bank, okay, $24.64. Now, they would get their 20, okay, and you would get $4.64. Really simple at the end of the day, and we're gonna keep it really simple until we get a little bit later on in the video. Now, the second question I get asked, and I get asked this all the time is, Austin, who loads the cash into the ATM? Okay, look, traditionally, you would load the cash into your own ATM. Now, you can get a third-party loader, okay? You can get a third-party loader and they'll load their cash into your machine. Now, you obviously have to pay them for doing that, okay? There's loaders all over the country, so don't worry. Um, but you can get a loader typically to load your machine for you with their cash for anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar of the total surcharge. So when a customer pulls out $20, as opposed to you making the entire amount, the $4.64 in theory, they would make 50 cents to a dollar of that and you would make the remainder. Now this all happens automatically and you're gonna tell your processing company, which we'll talk about in a little while, how to go ahead and divvy up all of the money. So again, real simple, you do not have to load your own machine if you don't want to. Now, you're more than welcome to. You're definitely capable of it. You can definitely do it. If you've got the extra cash and it isn't doing anything, you're just letting a bunch of cash just sit in your bank, then I would definitely recommend that you load it, okay? Especially if you have a little bit of free time on your hands and you know, you don't mind going ahead and just going and driving out to the ATM machine every you know week or two weeks or whatever. The third most frequently asked question is, Austin, where do I buy an ATM? Okay, maybe I should have put this as number one. I don't really know. I didn't do this in any particular order because really, I just wanted you to stay to the end of the video and make sure you smash the like button at least three times because you got to do it an odd number of times because if you do it twice, then you'll end up just unliking the video. So as long as you smash the like button an odd number of times, then you should be fine. Look, so it does depend on what type of ATM you wanna buy. It depends on if you wanna buy a new ATM or an old ATM. Uh, it depends on if you wanna get an ATM that's like in the wall. And you probably know what I'm talking about. I'll show you on the screen like right uh, there, okay? But uh, you know, you can get an ATM that's like in the wall. You can also get an ATM that like hangs on the wall. But your, your standard ATM machine that just sits on the ground, and let's just say you're gonna buy a Halo 2, a Hisong Halo 2, or a Gen Mega 2500, okay? Those ATMs, brand new, shipped to your front door, will probably run you about 
$2,500. And again, that's brand new and shipped to your front door. Ordering an ATM is really simple. I really encourage you not to overcomplicate it, okay? Uh, you know, buying an ATM is really as simple as going on Amazon and ordering some groceries. People ask me all the time, they say, Austin, what other costs are associated with getting involved in the ATM business? Okay, look, um, there's really not many. Now, here, here's what I want you to consider. If you're loading your own machine, okay, you can either consider the cost of whatever cash you've got to put in the machine as a cost, or you can consider it uh, just recycled money. Because at the end of the day, when somebody uses your machine and they pull out $20, that $20, whoever's loading the machine, whoever's volting the machine, that $20 will get direct deposited back into your account, typically within about 24 to 48 hours, okay? So uh, you, you're not really spending that money. So I personally don't consider that a cost of running the business. Now, if you are loading your own machine, then what I would consider the cost of running the business would be the cost of gas, the cost of wear and tear on my car, uh, the cost of insurance on my car. I would consider uh, things like that, okay? Definitely just keep that in mind, but there's not a lot. Now people are like, Austin, well, uh, what's the cost of like, isn't there like a monthly fee or uh, do I gotta pay? Like, I feel like people just overcomplicate it, right? I'm like, no, like there, there's nothing, right? You own the machine, okay? It's like going out and buying a Toyota Prius. You own the Prius, right? It's your freaking Prius. If you go out and you buy a freking Prius in cash, it's your freaking Prius. I mean, there ain't a lot you gotta do with it, right? Now, you gotta get insurance on the Prius, okay? So if you wanna get insurance on your ATM machine, that would be the cost, okay? There is no cost of processing. The processing company will typically make a fee in which they call interchange. Now, interchange, uh, I would just Google it, okay? Interchange, you really don't need to know what it is, but it's 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 just kind of the di the way that I understand it. Now you're probably gonna comment down, but you're gonna be like, awesome. You don't know what interchange is. You're just a freaking clown, okay? Interchange is the difference between the surcharge fee and something to do with the bank. I don't really even understand it. You don't need to understand it. It is not a cost to you, okay? So when I look at like, what are the costs associated with running the ATM business? There really aren't any. Now, some processing companies will charge you uh, a, a fee. Not all processing companies will charge you a fee. I personally use CDS as my processing company, okay? You can use whatever you want. There's multiple processing companies out there. If you drop in the comment section down below, I'm happy to help you out with that. Uh, real simple, at the end of the day, uh, processing, uh, you know, can basically be free to you, and um, that's all I really consider, okay? If they're gonna charge you money, they're probably gonna charge you something like 10 cents a transaction or 20 cents a transaction, okay? It just depends. But again, that isn't an out-of-pocket expense. You can also consider the cost of maintenance an ATM as a cost, okay? But back to my Toyota Prius analogy, if you're familiar with the Toyota Prius, they go like a half a million miles. Look, an ATM machine, uh, a good ATM machine will typically dispense a couple of million bills. So you're not gonna be maintenancing it a whole lot, okay? Now, you might put some receipt paper in the ATM machine, very rarely. I mean, when's the last time you went to an ATM and it said, do you want a receipt? And you said, yes, I do, okay? I don't do that. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't, I don't need a receipt, okay? It's 2021, what do I need a receipt for? My bank's gonna tell me exactly how much money I pulled out, okay? So look, receipt paper does not, you're not gonna go through it very quickly. FAQ number five, uh, people are always like, Austin, uh, what about internet, okay? An ATM machine's gotta have internet. Now, if the owner of the location or the location itself, whether it be a bar or a barber shop or a salon or whatever it is, if they have internet, you can connect to their internet. Now, if their modem or their router isn't near where the ATM machine is gonna go and you can't connect an ethernet cable from the ATM to the modem or the router, then it won't work. What you can do, here's a little hack, okay? You can go to Best Buy. I'll show you a picture like right here. Okay, you go to Best Buy, you could buy a Wi-Fi extender. It's got like two little antennas on it, like 50 bucks, okay, maybe cheaper. And you can go ahead and plug that into power. It'll pick up on the Wi-Fi box or the, the modem or the router. Uh, it'll pick up on the signal and then you can connect the ethernet to the extender to the ATM. And boom, you got Wi-Fi. Now, if there's no Wi-Fi in the location, which is pretty rare, okay, but let's just say you get an ATM in a location, there's no Wi-Fi. The owner of the location's like, yep, there's no Wi-Fi, Austin. 
you are S O L. Okay. Then you can get what they call like a D P L unit. Okay, I'll put it right here. D P L. Gone. D P L. You know what they call DPL unit. It's gonna cost you probably 15, 20, 25 bucks a month to get a DPL unit. There's a couple of other companies that do it and that will be your Wi-Fi. But, uh, but it's very uncommon. Look, you could also just choose not to place your ATM in that location too. So again, take it with a grain of salt. Just trying to go through the frequently asked questions here. Frequently asked question number six. Austin, how much does the ATM business actually make you? Well, I'll show you a couple screenshots uh, right here and right there of what a couple of my ATMs made me back in the month of December. I would say the average ATM will make you three to $500 a month. Don't get greedy, okay? You know, the ATM business, in my opinion, should be treated as a side hustle. You know, for us, it's a total side hustle, right? Real estate is my main thing. I invest in the stock market, we invest in other stuff. Uh, the ATM business is a total side hustle, okay? So three to 500 bucks a month. Now, you might get horribly unlucky and, and you make like, 200 bucks a month, or you make like 150 bucks a month. You also might get real lucky, you make a thousand bucks a month. Now, it, per your ATM contract uh, with, the, with the store owner, if the ATM, and you can write all this in there, okay? Use Rocket Lawyer, Google it, talk to your attorney, whatever you gotta do. If, you're, if your contract says, you know, hey, I, I want my ATM to make a minimum threshold of blank, and if it doesn't, I reserve the right to move my ATM machine. Then just move your ATM machine. So if you put your ATM, in a crappy location and it doesn't do the transactions you wanted it to do and just move the machine somewhere else. Real simple, real easy. I would say three to 500 bucks a month is really safe. Now again, $2,500 investment, brand new machine. Get a loader if you want. So you don't even have to load it yourself. To make three to $500 a month on a $2,500 uh, $2, one-time investment is not bad, okay? Not bad. Even if you have to load it yourself, not bad. Frequently asked question number seven is Austin, how do I find a good location? Um, you call them, you walk in the front door and you say, hey, I would like to talk to the owner of this uh, barbershop. Do you have their number? And they're gonna say, oh, it's me. And I'm gonna say, great. Have you ever thought about uh, having an ATM machine in your business? And they're gonna say, yeah, time or two. And I'm gonna say, great. Well, it looks like you don't have one. They're gonna say, nope. And I'm gonna say, why not? And they're gonna say, well, blah, blah, blah. And I'm gonna say, okay, great. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put one in your location for free. Sign here. And I'll pull out my handy dandy pen. And I'm gonna say, I'm just messing around, okay? Look, um, you know, talk to people. Okay, talk to people. You know, I feel like the people that ask this question, they don't wanna talk to people. They don't wanna send an email. They don't wanna make a phone call. They don't wanna walk into a barbershop and just ask. They don't wanna walk into a nail salon and just ask. They don't wanna walk into a bar and just ask. Look, it isn't complicated, okay? Now, you can automate it if you want. You can um, send out 10,000 emails or 10,000 text messages. You can hire a virtual assistant to do it for you. And there's a lot of ways to do that. But really, really simply put, you just have to talk to people, right? You have to say, hey, you know, I'm in the ATM business. I would love to provide an ATM in your business. Um, I would ask them some pre-qualifying questions like, you know, how many customers do you have on average in a day? How many of those customers pay cash? Things like that to make me feel better about the location. But uh, it, it, don't ever complicate it. Keep it real, real simple. Going Yelp, right? Going Yelp. Search for businesses in your area and just give them a call, okay? Give them a call. Look, guys, uh, I meant this video to be real fun. I know that my tonality is probably a bit aggressive, so I apologize, but I, I meant the video to be fun. I'd really appreciate it if you just smash the like button, okay, for the YouTube algorithm. Um, I didn't get through all of the FAQ, so if I didn't get through a question that you have, please, please, please drop in the comments section below letting me know what question I didn't answer, and I would love to answer it for you down there. Also, uh, if I get enough of you, Okay, if I get enough of you to drop in the comment section below, I'll make a follow-up video on the FAQ like part two. Okay, so stay tuned for that by just subscribing if you haven't already. I really appreciate you for watching the video. I think 2021 can be a great year for the ATM business. Uh, I think that cash is not going away anytime soon. Let me know what you think down below. I think you've gotta find the right location. Don't get me wrong. You gotta find the right location. I think you can do very well in the ATM business. I think it is a great ROI uh, on your money. And I think it is a great side hustle for 2021. Let me know what you think down below. I really appreciate it. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.